Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're delving into an important topic, noise-canceling headphones. They've become an everyday companion for many, allowing us to tune out the chaos around us. But there's growing concern about their impact on our hearing. Joining me is my co-host, Alara Skye. She focuses on natural health and will share valuable insights on the potential risks and benefits of using noise-canceling headphones. Thanks for having me, Ethan. I'm glad we're exploring this topic because so many people rely on noise-canceling headphones every day. From offices to public transport to noisy home environments, they've become a common tool to reduce unwanted sound. However, like most modern conveniences, there can be drawbacks we need to understand. We'll discuss how these headphones actually work, what benefits they offer, and where potential risks might lie for our hearing and overall auditory processing. Let's begin by looking at how these headphones function. Noise-canceling technology might seem almost magical. Put them on, and suddenly the volume of the outside world drops. How exactly does that happen? It's a fascinating process. Essentially, the headphones monitor the sounds in your environment, then generate opposing sound waves that cancel out that noise. Think of it as subtracting one sound wave from another. This technology originated decades ago for airplane pilots who struggled with loud engine noise. Today, it's widely available to consumers, and many types of noise-canceling headphones blend both active and passive methods. Active meaning they use electronics to create inverse sound waves, and passive meaning they rely on padding or design to block outside sounds. So the result is often a quieter listening experience, which can be quite helpful in many situations. Let's talk about the recognized benefits first. Why do people gravitate toward noise-canceling headphones? There are several reasons. One main benefit is stress reduction. Our environment is packed with noise, traffic, chatter, appliances. Blocking these sounds can provide relief from that constant sensory input. Another advantage is improved focus. In a busy office, classroom, or cafe, people use noise-canceling headphones to zero in on a task without distraction. Finally, there's the sound quality factor. Because outside noise is reduced, listeners can enjoy music or podcasts at a lower volume without losing clarity. This often means richer audio details without blasting your eardrums. Lowering volume is crucial, especially because turning headphones up too high can lead to hearing damage over time. But the article we're referencing highlights some potential drawbacks as well. One concern that stands out is how extended use might cause your brain to become less adept at filtering out everyday background sounds. Could you explain that? Certainly. Our brains naturally process and filter environmental noise, allowing us to focus on specific sounds, like a conversation in a busy room. If you regularly wear noise-canceling headphones and block out background noise entirely, you might lose some of that filtering ability over time. This is sometimes referred to as an auditory processing difficulty. Experts suggest that by isolating yourself from normal ambient sounds too frequently, you're training your brain to expect silence. When you remove the headphones, everyday noises can feel overwhelming or jumbled. That leads directly into worries about how constant noise-canceling usage might affect our overall hearing health. Even if we use them at moderate volumes, could the persistent suppression of ambient sound still pose a risk? Yes, that's a valid concern. Some professionals have observed younger people complaining about hearing issues, even though standard hearing tests show normal results. This raises the possibility that their brains are having trouble processing and prioritizing sounds, Overuse of noise-canceling headphones might contribute to these issues, especially in settings where constant cancellation masks the usual auditory cues your brain expects to handle. Additionally, for some, wearing these headphones at high volumes can contribute to problems such as tinnitus, a ringing or buzzing in the ears, and ear discomfort from prolonged pressure. The article also noted other potential downsides, like difficulty determining sound direction, becoming more sensitive to noise when headphones aren't in use, and for wireless varieties, exposure to electromagnetic fields. While there's no conclusive proof that noise-canceling headphones alone cause significant harm, we're hearing from people who notice changes in how they interpret sound. 
right. Some reports mentioned individuals feeling that their listening skills had worsened. One issue is that if you're always insulated from background sounds, your auditory system may forget how to filter them naturally. Experts also mention that there's a difference between hearing and listening, and that constant noise cancellation might reduce your ability to listen effectively. Although more research is needed, it's worth paying attention to these concerns and using noise-canceling features judiciously. This reminds me of the idea that your brain is like a muscle. If you don't engage it by allowing it to work with normal background noise, it can lose strength in that area. Let's go over practical tips to protect our hearing if we choose to use noise-canceling headphones. What does moderation look like in this context? Moderation often begins with awareness of volume and duration. A common guideline is the 60-60 rule, which means listening at no more than 60% of your device's volume for no longer than 60 minutes at a time. Taking regular breaks, removing the headphones for a few minutes each hour, gives your ears and brain a chance to recalibrate. It's also wise to use noise canceling selectively, such as when you truly need to focus or during short periods in noisy environments. And if you notice any changes in your hearing or persistent ringing, it's a good idea to get a professional evaluation. The constant theme is to avoid extremes. Using noise cancellation can certainly help reduce stress and allow clearer listening in loud settings. But wearing these headphones for hours on end may have unintended consequences. Let's address a few frequently asked questions on this topic. Great idea. I know people often wonder if noise canceling headphones can directly damage their hearing. That question comes up a lot. Let's start with that question. Can noise canceling headphones actually harm your hearing? By themselves, noise canceling headphones don't typically cause direct damage. The bigger issue is that people sometimes crank the volume too high because the external noise is diminished. When volume is excessive for prolonged periods, the risk of hearing damage increases. If you keep volume at a sensible level and avoid wearing them endlessly, you're less likely to experience problems. So the real threat is the combination of noise canceling and high volume, not the technology on its own. Another question is about the safest way to use them. If someone wants to keep noise canceling headphones in their rotation, what should they keep in mind? The safest approach is to follow that 60-60 rule and build in breaks. Pay attention to your surroundings. If you're in a quiet place, you probably don't need noise cancellation at all. And if you realize you're starting to turn up the volume to block out new noise, it might be better to step away from the loud area or pause your listening session. Sometimes people say their ears feel tired or fatigued after wearing headphones for a long stretch. Why does that happen? Headphone fatigue can occur because your ears and brain are constantly working to interpret sound whether it's music or active noise cancellation. Over several hours, that strain can build up. It's similar to how your eyes get tired after looking at a screen for too long. Regular breaks give your auditory system time to recover. If you notice discomfort or pressure in your ears, that's a signal to take the headphones off. Let's talk about the benefits briefly. Are they valid or are we overstating them? The benefits are very real. Noise canceling headphones can reduce stress, especially in loud environments and help you concentrate on tasks without distractions. They also allow you to listen at lower volumes while maintaining clarity. That's beneficial for people who want to avoid blasting their music just to drown out background noise. These perks just need to be balanced with awareness of potential downsides. Thanks for walking us through those common questions, Alara. This discussion underscores that noise-canceling headphones can be beneficial if used carefully. By practicing moderation, keeping volumes in check, and allowing your ears to do their natural job regularly, you can still enjoy the perks without as much risk to your hearing. Absolutely. Our hearing is precious, and proactive measures go a long way. Being mindful of volume levels, giving yourself breaks, and using noise-canceling technology strategically can help you avoid potential pitfalls. It's all about using the tools wisely to maintain good auditory health. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you, Ilara, for shedding light on this important topic. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. If you found this discussion useful, stay alert for our next episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we'll continue exploring ways to keep our bodies and our senses thriving. Until then, take care of your ears and remember to use noise-canceling headphones responsibly.